Hello, everyone. Yeah. My name is Ben Mulrooney. Yeah. Uh, thank you for uh, allowing me to MC this today. Um, we're going to get right into it because I know you guys have a busy day, and uh, I know our guests want to get up here as well. So, four years ago, Flashpoint exploded onto Canadian television, and over the last four years, the award, the award-winning smash hit series blazed the trail for Canadian productions to come, proving that if you make great television, Canadians will watch. And over the 75 episodes, I believe it's average 1.5 million viewers in Canada each and every day. So that's a great. <laughs> the series follows the risk-filled lives of a tactical group portrayed by a stellar ensemble cast, with Toronto as the backdrop, marking its fifth and exciting final season. Flashpoint will certainly be missed, but this award-winning homegrown hit will never be forgotten. Now, before we introduce our guests, we'd like to show you a quick sneak peek at the upcoming season. <laughs> Welcome guys. Nice to see you again. 
Um, so uh, there are no doubt a lot of questions in the audience. I'm just going to ask probably the most general question. And I'll throw it to all of you who wants to answer is what can these guys and what can Canada expect uh, from this fifth and final season? Um, I think knowing that this was the final season, we just pulled out all the stops. We wanted to take it into some new extremes. We wanted to explore some of the fees that we opened up five years ago and raised into some kind of resolution. We just knew that we wanted to go out with the bang and, and you know, the show is such a smoothly running, um, just a, a beautiful piece of opera. And the team that we get to work with are so much on top of the game that there's nothing they can do. We really are, we lean really heavily on our very brilliant uh, designers and, and crew directors um, all the way through five seasons of Flashpoint, and so we built up to a season finale in the last two episodes that was really going to uh, make them hate us for everything we were asking them to do. <laughs> and, uh, but they, they rose to the challenge, and I, I think you guys will be blown away by the last two episodes. Well, I've seen this first episode. It, it, it is, it's a heck of a way to start the season. <laughs> uh, do we have any questions in the audience? Right in the back. Why don't you stand up? Favorite episode of Flashpoint? Why don't we go down the line? Um, my favorite episode is Haunting the Barn, um, in which Ed Lane uh, confronts his mentor who's going to kill himself at the SRU station. And to me, that episode is a passion play for the series that speaks about the human cost of heroism and what every cop goes through. And my second favorite is probably uh, One Wrong Move and uh, the difficult choice we made to kill a character and the great performances mm -hmm. by our cast, and especially. Uh, uh, Sergio and his uh, reaction to his best friend. Mm -hmm. um, I would just keep throwing there um, behind the blue line. Uh, again, it's uh, a look at the difficulty of doing a job that you have to do, and it was also, uh, you know, pretty great performed by David Nico, and it was a love letter to um, a vanishing monument in front of Toronto that so many people have found it emotional bond with and it's a story that can happen anywhere in the world so it's kind of I'd say my favorite uh, is very much when I came into it. <laughs> 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 um, what it gave me a lot to play with it was it, was, it mirrored itself with my life and uh, the show is coming in and it was such an emotional situation. So to fit in with a, a new family and uh, in my life and, and, and the show, was, it was, there was nothing to act. So that was very easy. And I really enjoyed the way that uh, Mark wrote into the script about the little, the little braces that I had to get to, to, to remember you. Beautiful and emotional, and I will never forget that. That is my favorite, favorite. Mark took my answer, and he writes for me, so that's normal. Um, that that is kind of my favorite episode. But I guess if I have to say another one, um, it was uh, <laughs> the titles. The one at the museum, though. Uh, with, that's my favorite. Right. 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 Acceptable risk. Acceptable risk. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you don't know the, the titles of every show. Well, we did a lot of them. We did a lot of them, man. We did a whole bunch. It was five years. Um, but uh, uh, I liked that one a lot because it was one of the first episodes where the team kind of looked at each other and said uh, that we're a team. And uh, by that point, it really, it really started gelling that way and feeling like this is something special that happened every once in a while. And it happened with that episode. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm having trouble with the titles. <laughs> Lazy uh, actors. <laughs> I don't know why, it's the titles that are a little bit hard. Um, <laughs> but all, all the above, uh, Haunting the Barn, was definitely, in terms of the impact that that had with the real police that we, we tried to, to emulate and, and respect and tell their stories, I think that really hit home with them. Uh, and it hit home with us when we were doing it. And, you know, Pants a Lion, I saw it the other day. I'm not on an airplane, actually. Yeah, someone else was watching it beside me, so I actually tuned in. <laughs> <laughs> Five years. <laughs> So now that it's been five years, do you think you guys are going to want to play cops again on another show? Absolutely. 
training now. You know how to hold the gun. Don't let it go to waste. I'll miss the uniform, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Did all the acting for you. <laughs> A question right here in the front? Yeah, Flashpoint is set in the real world. Since this is Fan Expo and basically a sci-fi comic anime convention, could you see your characters or similar characters in a fictional fantasy type sci-fi environment? And if so, how would you see your character play out? Well, I've always, like, you know, uh, and characters were always written very real, which made it very easy for us to play it, and, which is great. But at the same time, I, 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 myself, and I think even Michelangelo Scarlatti, saw um, us as a superhero team. You know? Like, I mean, I read the script, even when, when I first got the job, and I'm like, this is Justice League. We're Justice League. <laughs> oh my god. Justice League. So, DC, not Marvel, okay. Yeah, more DC kid. <laughs> I don't know, it's Hugh. Hugh looks like Professor X to me. <laughs> uh, do you have another question? Right here? Um, yeah, in the final season, we're going to expect a lot of changes in terms of the team itself. But what kind of changes are we going to uh, see in the personal lives of each character? Well, as you can see, there's, uh, well, you, you, you see some, there's some changes. Uh, right here at this table, uh, since the people come back, and, you know, there's changes that way. There's major changes uh, for every uh, member of the team, major. And uh, I think that's what Stephanie and Mark did so beautifully when they plotted this season five, because we knew, we all knew we were going to end it. And, uh, so uh, I can't give away, unfortunately, any of the major spoilers or uh, uh, changes, but, th but they're they're going to be satisfied. It's a great, it's a great gift, and it's a very rare gift from how we can to know when uh, it's not a gift to be But for us, creatively, know when you're going to end the season, and to kind of have an idea when you go back to season two, you know, how, what would I do with this character at the end of the day? Where, where's the end of, of, of the stories that I want to tell them? To be able to ramp up to that in small ways through season four, and then to really bring those stories home and tell them in a satisfying way, in a concluding way, um, at the end, Another question, uh, right here in the red. Uh, hi, yes, this uh, question is to Dave. Uh, that episode you filmed in the Make Leave Garden, where you had to shoot the character and you tried your best to talk him down, how did your character go through that? And did you have any after effects afterward? Because you tried your best to talk him down, but unfortunately you had to resort to violence to talk to end the conflict. Did that affect you off stage, even though you are an actor? Well, <laughs> you know, the, just the being in that location, first of all, and, uh, you know, it, was, it felt like something special when we were in there because it, I don't know if anyone's been to Maple Leaf Gardens at that time, but, you know, half the seats are gone, and it, it, was, it was like a, you know, uh, being in a, in a museum. And, uh, but, that, yeah, that was, a, you know, one of my favorite episodes. <laughs> but, but, yeah, that affected Sam the most because... He should, if there was one person he should have been able to connect with, it was a fellow soldier who's been through some of the same trauma that he has. And Sam didn't pull the trigger, and he was not very happy that somebody did. So, uh, yeah, he almost walked <laughs> off the team. But for me personally, I was just happy to be in the party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right here. What song is that? Uh, take, take 20. <laughs> That's getting harder on take 4, and then by take 20 it's really hard. Or, or sometimes it's just the, the gear in the middle of summer. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Right so much weight. Right here. Please! <laughs> If you got to keep a set or a prop, um, or a set piece or a prop, what did you keep and why? They <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't let, let us keep guns. <laughs> <laughs> I've got I've got the shirt. 
this one being that you got to share too. Did you get any of Um, I got some stuff. <laughs> 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 uh, I, I got pretty sad when, when uh, the command desk, uh, not command desk, the, uh, the, the command truck, where Spike spent a lot of time. Uh, my last day on that was a sad kind of day. It was like a, I hung out there a lot over five years. And by the fifth year, you know, you remember what you felt like on the first year hanging behind that desk? And, and that was hard. So if there was a way that if somebody had a den that we could rebuild that in. <laughs> such a puppy coming into the show and I was a bit of a puppy actor coming into the show and uh, it was such a good energy like uh, you know it's a whole bunch of alpha guys on the team and we all have guns and we're all tough but there's I thought with, with uh, Michael Andrew, like he was learning how to be one of the big tough guys and I was learning how to be an actor on the hit show so I was um, so there's a lot of the both of us in there it was good uh, for me Sam Braddock was yeah Definitely the most fun I've ever had with a character. And it, was, uh, it, was, it was fun to be a good guy. I love the bad guys that people want to not like. So it was, uh, it was nice to you know, be a cop and be a good guy and be a hero and, and uh, say cool things. <laughs> Which is pretty much David anyway. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't know. I can't shoot a gun. But, uh, yeah. Has your aim improved over the years? My. my uh, no, I'm For Stephanie and Mark, so many, you know, procedurals on television are either about investigating crimes or taking down the bad guys. And Flashpoint, to me, has always been about saving people's lives and doing everything you can. And can could you speak a bit to where that all came from, as far as creators? It comes from real life. You know, police officers are trained to fire their guns. They're not trained to kill people. And um, when we uh, when we started working with CBS, especially because I think the American sensibility is a little different from the Canadian sensibility. I know that we get a lot of the time. Of why doesn't it, you know? Why is it a big deal that kills somebody? Well, you know, if our guys with the words fail them, they do have to pull the trigger. Then we're going to do it. In a meaningful, impactful way, because every human life um, is precious, and, and it was a challenge for us to have the show evolve into the kind of show that would last for 75 episodes by finding ways to make SWAT scenes fit into a procedural mold. And what did it for us? The SWAT scene they would never break up and go investigating over here while somebody else is doing something over there. It'd all be in one place. But then we started to watch some house and. Doctors with a great great metabolism. I guess we could do some of that. So, <laughs> was um, you know, you talk about working with CBS. Um, you know, building a show for two different sensibilities. I'm thinking it occurred to me that were there certain procedures or certain aspects of Canadian or, or, or police policing as well that you have to stay away from because Americans just wouldn't get it. Mm -hmm. Um, we didn't have to <coughs> avoid the Canadian approach because the Canadian approach was the premise. That within one team, every member is cross trained Everyone can use legal force if they have to be. But they are trained in the psychological profile, in the threat assessment. They are trained to make a violence not necessary. And that's based on and inspired by the one team. So if they would have had any problem with that, whole approach, they, they wouldn't have been attracted to the story. Um, 
the balance between uh, compassion and power, or um, empathy and force, that's what the whole show is about. So we didn't have to struggle with them on that. But we did have those questions of, is it such a big deal that he does? It is. We wanted to bring home the gravity of taking life. And in the context of the talk show, the lives are cheap. <laughs> you want to do pull the trigger, go have a beer. <laughs> in the first episode, you know, we really we drive straight back to that notion and that theme of reconnecting with the themes of season one, in which we see Adelaide and have to take a shot and go through the emotional repercussions of, of a close call in that first episode. And so season five was constructed in a way to kind of mirror what we began in season one. Um, the guy in the green shirt right there. Well, I'm a, actually I'm American. And we <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> which uh, brings me to my next question: Is it coming back on CBS? No, it's on Ion. Ion Network. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So it transfers over well. Right <laughs> here. Uh, We're just wondering since you brought up the command truck. We all see the team going in in their SUV. He has a command truck. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> <laughs> every new director that can come out to the show would be like giving notes on the script. I don't get how the command truck. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Uh, <laughs> no, I got hurt. I wound up uh, having to go to the hospital. And guess what? It's the hospital from the listener. <laughs> Crazy? <laughs> it just happened. It was fun. Um, Andrew Sesmer uh, is uh, a, a very good friend, and uh, it was fun to actually have a good time to play with him uh, on the show. Um, lady right there. Hi. Um, you guys are very close as a team. How close are you guys as a cast? It's pretty awesome. We're on to the show. Well, I mean our neighbors, but. Uh, <laughs> So we see each other quite a lot, but uh, we, you know what? Five years. Let's hope you cl- you get close because uh, we can't imagine what it would be like working with people that you know you're not friends with. Uh, I just take it for granted, actually. So uh, yeah, I mean, he, this guy's been in Los Angeles for us a few weeks. No beers lately. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, you. you it's, you know, you know, words like love get thrown around a lot uh, in our work. You know, I love you, you're gay, I love you, I love you. But <laughs> after what we all been through, it's, it's love. It's fun and it's real. Yeah. Um, Spider-Man? <laughs> 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 it's pretty nice here. <laughs> Gardens was mentioned. Are there any favorites that you've shot in or any maybe coming up that were really fun to shoot that we can look forward to? Or maybe hard? Like the workaround? <laughs> well, we, we, uh, oh, yeah, uh, we got, I mean, we got to know, I mean, I'm from Vancouver. I live here now, but we got, I found Lotus yeah. City just from the location that we chose. We, we were all over the GTA, which, by the way, I say in one of the episodes, GTA. But, uh, yeah, no, uh, just discovering all, for me, just discovering all these wonderful neighborhoods. But a personal favorite, I, I don't know, it was nice, it was fun to be downtown. It's fun to get permission to rip down Young Street, you know, speeding in a car. Down <laughs> <laughs> the square was pretty epic, though first night shoot we ever did was down there. And uh, just being able to see the city in the background. You know, it's and if you never get caught in traffic. <laughs> 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 it only takes us 15 minutes to get to <laughs> <laughs> I should have following you guys. But <laughs> uh, woman who loves Flashpoint. First of all, I really thank you so much for making such an amazing show. And uh, Flashpoint is a Canadian TV show uh, which set in Toronto. So I'm just wondering if you put some very Toronto or Canadian things in that show. So if you, because I'm Japanese, so I have no idea. What. <laughs> <laughs> so for example, I had no idea what does double double mean. <laughs> so if you did, so where should I focus on or watch carefully, which is I can enjoy. So, is that basically what makes it uniquely Canadian? Yeah, well, yeah what, what should she be looking for so that she can enjoy the Canadian that much more? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I think that the slogan, keep the peace, feels Canadian. Um, for people so heavily and sophisticatedly armed to say keep the peace as, as, a, as a mantra, I think that's Canadian. As Canadians, I think we've traditionally seen ourselves as a nation of peace um, and uh, you know, we idealize this team as being somebody who wanted to go into words rather than weapons. And the show came out at a time when the U.S. was going into Iraq, and we felt that going in with weapons without asking questions first was something of a Canadian thing. And we wondered, you know, and think about why the show was successful in the U.S. That maybe contextually that there was a little bit of the fatigue of going in and, and asking questions afterwards, which uh, I was saying. Um, yellow shirt. Uh, I have a question for Sergio and Stephanie Mark. Sergio, how's your tech skills? <laughs> <laughs> and 
uh, Stephanie and Mark, how, uh, why have you written out certain characters that you have? And love all the characters, but really love uh, Wordy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the text goes, uh, they, uh, they got better because of the show, because I had a scandal was coming out of my mouth. <laughs> They gave me a whole education and stuff that I absolutely would never have had any education. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, it's hard, it's hard not to, uh, to talk about the accident of Luke in the show, the accident of Worry in the show, that getting quite emotional. Um, but I think that for, for um, you know, that choice, we, we approach everything from the story point of view. And this is it. And the first choice we made to have a team member killed was because we said this was a job that was about life and death stakes and police officers putting their lives on the line and we didn't want to say that in our show. And we also wanted to say this is a team about elite officers and what it takes to be on a team like this and what happens when something happens to you that should be minor and, and not even consequential for the rest of us but can be devastating to somebody that's in a position like these guys are. And so we just wanted to explore every corner of what that job is, and we did have to make those um, difficult uh, decisions. And I think they, they yield great episodes as well. And I think that Mike Cram um, brought a, a magnificent uh, emotional performance in that episode, um, one of the best performances I've seen in the series. And I have to say, uh, partially motivated by his, his own feelings and all of our feelings having to shoot that scene. Uh, Clark Kent. <laughs> um, David, aside from your role in uh, in the Superman Man of Steel, for each of you and Stephanie and Mark as well, after digging in your heels into a drama for five years, is there another type of genre, another type of uh, experience that you're looking for, maybe outside of a dramatic role that also has such an emotional component? Well, I'm a you know big fan of TV, so many shows that I. I, I just kind of want to explore genre, and, and uh, I'm, a, you know, I'm a big sci-fi guy. So anything, you know, space-related, I would love to do. Anything period, I would love to do. I think I could, I would love if I have the opportunity, I would love to try something uh, outside of the contemporary. But you know what? It's so much fun. Even the worst, from the worst project I've done, technically, you know, speaking how it was received, I probably had the most fun doing so. And you know, work is fun, and if you can keep it fun, and I'll, I'll try any of once. You know? <laughs> and we got like spoiled with the show, I mean, so but like really, because like it kind of crossed um, stuff. It was it was comedic, and it was dramatic, and it was a teen show, and it was um, like a, a procedural show. Like we got to do everything for five years. So now, uh, good luck, next boss. <laughs> <laughs> get into more comedy. Uh, I, I was lucky to do this film in Montreal called French Immersion, and I didn't know I was funny. <laughs> 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 I don't know what happened, but somehow I got nominated for the Canadian Comedy Awards, which is a Sunday. <laughs> projects that, that have been in the back of our minds for a long time and we're kind of looking at, at those. And, uh, I used to do comedy a long time ago with uh, a good friend of mine, Kevin White, who's a, was a showrunner in Corner Gas. And, uh, I'd like to get back to him some of that sometime. Maybe I'm trying to just go for walks and see movies. That sounds good. Yeah, pretty much the same. I can come on those walks. Flashpoint, the musical. <laughs> We've got a few points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Members, uh, <laughs> David already said he would be doing anything once. So, uh, well, look, we, uh, we have a lot of people who want to uh, just say thank you to get your autographs. So we are going to let's finish up with one last question in the back. Right there. Yes, you. <laughs> I think that's really bad. <laughs> um, Did you want to say this talk or would you do um, I think I think the zone that we play in is that there is no answer. Um, so there are the skills um, and professionalism of the team makes them good thoughts. The situation
personally saying goodbye to this show. I don't know whether you've, you've let it go yet, uh, but I think you've given a great gift uh, to all of those who love the show. Uh, it the it's been a pleasure to follow the growth and success uh, of Flashpoint and, and everyone associated with it. Uh, and if the first episode is um, any indication, you've given a great gift to the fans of the show in this final season. It's a long goodbye, and I'm sure everyone's going to cherish it. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you all. For you.